All right, guys. So I have found this. Well, we have found because I'm still I'm still with Vinny. We have found the perfect little town. And by perfect, we mean like movie, small town, perfect. Guys, my name's Rookster. Welcome to a video. But we have found the perfect little town. It's Aurora, Indiana. I believe it's Aurora. Yeah, we're in Aurora. Yeah, Aurora, because here's the police department. Ooh. Ugh. So we found a nice little nice little uh restaurant here. We're gonna try some of the some of the locals have told us that it's a good place to eat. And hi. And uh, but some of the locals have told us it's a good place to eat, so we're gonna try it out. It's called Third and Main. It's on Third and Main. While we were down here, we saw some really cool stuff that we're gonna show you right after we eat. So uh, are we gonna eat first, or are we gonna? Yeah, we're gonna eat first. We're gonna eat first. So let's go eat. We'll grab some shots. And we'll tell you what we got and what we thought. So one of the 
people that works here decided he wanted to show us. And he said we got some really cool stuff inside as we were grabbing the B-roll outside. So let's see what he's got to show us. Hey guys, what's going on? So this is our bookshelves. These are our fireplaces. It's just a small dining room, nice and setting. We do dry age meats, things like that. Upstairs you'll find some good stuff right behind us. Oh my god! There you go. That is what? That is our uh, speakeasy upstairs. So if you want to go out and take a, uh, some clips. Oh, we can? can you get it's the all yours. To the, to the restaurant? Uh, 223 3rd Street in Aurora, Indiana. Awesome, thank you. Absolutely. 223 3rd Street, Aurora, Indiana. 3rd of Main on 3rd Main. 3rd of Main on 3rd Main. So awesome. Let's go up there let's, check this out. This is it. awesome. Wow. That's cool. Oh, wow. There I am upstairs, Al Capone. There's a freaking speakeasy. I'm dying. Leave your Tommy got at the door. Oh, my God. Dude, this is way cooler than I thought it was going to be. Oh. No. Oh wow. my god. No. <laughs> so for mine, do you mind going over what a speakeasy is? Yeah, so um, back in the 20s when there was prohibition, which is, uh, it was illegal to sell, drink, distribute alcohol. Um, people would actually like make moonshine and make alcohol and they would smuggle it basically and they would have underground bars um, and places that weren't really known. And uh, that's how like the gangsters and stuff started because they were selling, buying, distributing alcohol illegally. So yeah, pretty cool. That is really neat. I mean, we've got old trombones, clarinets, saxophones. This is oh, this is awesome. This is so amazing. So. A speakeasy. This is my first time ever in a speakeasy. And we're both vlogging at the same time, so we're gonna get each other's look at this room. D this is oh my gosh. This is my first time ever in a in an actual speakeasy or what used to be a speakeasy or anything. And it's just here's some pictures of 3rd and Main, back before it was probably 3rd and Main. This is just, this is just too much guys. Yeah. This is too much. You guys can probably watch us munch on some good old fashioned uh, puppy boy food. <laughs> oh! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those old barrels. Or jars, girls. I'm dumb. <laughs> that was cool opening that up. So this place has been a tavern since uh, 1891. It's one of the oldest uh, continuously active liquor licenses in the state of Indiana. Um, became an establishment in 1891. Got the original bar inside the bar from 1885. Survived prohibition. Survived a large number of floods throughout the years. Uh, in 1937, I think it got waist deep upstairs. And uh, flood in '97, it probably been up to your eyes. In there. So it's been underwater a few times. It's been uh, prohibited from selling alcohol, but uh, it is said that uh, the, uh, all the guys and people knew each other and it was said that it was licensed to sell alcohol as a prescription in town and their prohibition. But of course they rumored that there was uh, a speakeasy up on the third floor with the original owners on the second floor as a residence. What's the phone ever here? Um, it's, it's said that Dillinger may have been here at some point. But it's hard to date that uh, because he was gone down in 1934, you know, just less than a year after Prohibition was repealed. So if he had visited this time, at, at some period, it would have been, you know, as a general store. So I don't know if he would have actually, um, actually sat in the bar, but it's it's rumored uh, as a mental Wow, thing, so yeah. that is cool. I appreciate you showing us all this. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, thank you all for coming out, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so we just finished eating. Oh, my God. I loved it. I had the Le Cordon Bleu with the calamari and potato salad. Primo goodness. Primo. And, oh, man, it was great. So, Adrian? Um, it was amazing. I had the chicken parmesan and potato salad, and it was thebomb.com. Perfect for a starving artist. Nice. <laughs> and, Vinny, what did you have? Ah, uh, you know, I had a burger with bacon. Uh, um, and all that good stuff like onions and lettuce and it was super bad 
buttocks. Okay. Nice. Because you don't say cuss words on YouTube. Oh, they're gone. Oh, 